Hey guys, Derek here from Back to Reality. And today I'd like to do a really quick follow up to the video we posted last week, which discussed whether or not the wind chill factor affects plants. Because after reading through some of the comments, I thought it would be helpful to address some of the questions and provide a few clarifications. Partly because it's an important topic that's unfortunately kind of confusing, but also because I'd hate for anyone to misunderstand what I meant and then end up having issues as a result. But since I'd also like to post this video while it's still relevant, I'll be skipping all of my usual animations and other visuals. So instead, please sit back, get cozy, and enjoy some of the relaxing rain during our temporary reprieve from the snow. Oh, and I should also mention that if you haven't already watched the previous video, you should really do that first, because in it, I went into quite a bit of detail about what the wind chill is, how to calculate it yourself, and how it does and does not affect living and non-living things. So this video won't make as much sense without it. Plus, it literally took me months to complete, so selfishly, I'd also just love for more people to actually see it. But anyway, enough of the preamble, let's get into it. First of all, the most important point that I'd like to reiterate is that despite appearances, the wind chill factor isn't about temperature. It's about cooling speed. So when you're watching the weather report to determine if you need to protect your outdoor plants, it's the actual temperature that matters, not the wind chill value. Because again, the wind chill is really just telling you how quickly things will cool down as a result of the wind, but it isn't telling you what temperature they'll eventually cool down to. This is because wind on its own doesn't make things cold. It just speeds up the cooling process that would have happened anyway. So for example, after pouring the cup of grass tea, if you were to just leave it on the counter in your kitchen, it would eventually cool down from boiling temperature to room temperature. And then the cooling would stop. No matter how long you left it, it wouldn't cool down any farther. But if you were to then take it outside on a cold winter day, it would once again cool down, but this time from room temperature to the outside temperature. And then the cooling would once again stop. So in order to cool a cup of hot tea, all you need is an air temperature that is lower than the tea temperature and enough time for the heat energy to dissipate. Plus, the colder the air temperature, the faster it will happen. That's why tea cools faster in the fridge than it does on the counter, and for that matter, why it cools faster again in a freezer or outside on a typical February day up here in Canada. But once the tea reaches the ambient temperature, or in other words, the air temperature of its surroundings, there is no longer a temperature difference, and so the cooling process stops. No additional time will change this. All of the cooling has already taken place. And similarly, if we were to add air movement, whether from the wind, a fan, or even just our own breath, all that does is speed up the cooling process that was already taking place. It's essentially just decreasing the amount of time it takes for the tea to cool down, but it doesn't change the end temperature. No matter how long you wait, or how fast the wind blows, the tea still cools down to the temperature of its surroundings, and then stops. But the confusing thing is that when we watch the weather report, they don't talk about the wind chill in terms of cooling speed, which is what it's really about, but instead give it a temperature value. And that's because the weather report isn't meant for protecting garden plants, it's meant for protecting people. And people, like other warm-blooded animals, need to maintain a fairly consistent body temperature at all times. So we don't just have heat, we also produce it. And if the cooling speed is faster than our body's heating speed, then it can result in frostbite and hypothermia. But unfortunately for most people, cooling speed is kind of hard to relate to. For example, up until the year 2001, Environment Canada used to report the wind chill factor as the amount of energy lost per second based on the amount of exposed skin. Or in other words, the cooling speed. But the values typically fell between 1,000 and 3,000 watts per meter squared. And while that was a very accurate and informative method for meteorologists, it also meant almost nothing to everyone else. So after 2001, they began using the formula I covered in the previous video, to put it in terms that us regular people could understand. Since we intuitively know that 0 degrees Celsius is cold, but minus 20 is much colder and will obviously cool you down much quicker. But again, the wind chill value isn't the temperature that things will cool down to. It's just an indication of how quickly things will cool down to the actual air temperature. And since your plants live outside, they're already at the air temperature anyway. So if the forecast is 10 degrees Celsius with a wind chill value of 0 degrees Celsius, 
to your plants, it's still 10 degrees. Meaning that if you know your plants are hardy to say plus five, then you're still within the safe temperature range despite the wind chill value that makes it feel a little colder to us. This was the main point I was trying to make in the previous video. But I also mentioned that though the wind chill value doesn't affect plants, the wind still does, because it contributes to other problems like water loss and broken stems. Plus, again, it does still increase the cooling speed of anything that's warmer than the air temperature. So, for example, if the overnight air temperature drops below the safe temperature of your plants, the wind speed will tell you how quickly you'd better get out there to cover them up. Because if there's no wind, then your plants may take a bit before they actually reach the new, colder temperature. But if there's a lot of wind, then they'll likely cool down right away. So, with that in mind, you could say that the wind chill value is indirectly relevant. But again, it's still the actual temperature that matters. If the air temperature is above the safe limit, then the wind alone won't make it colder. But some of you mentioned other scenarios that I'd like to address as well, like the fact that warm air can sometimes pool around your plants, which provides extra protection from the cold. This could be due to natural conditions, like rocks radiating stored heat energy from the sun, or even heat released from decomposing compost. Plus, it can also include artificial conditions, like row covers and mulch. These are essentially microclimates that hold on to a protective layer of warm air, kind of like us wearing a thick sweater to protect our body heat. But then, when the wind blows, it can absolutely carry away some or all of that warmer air and quickly drop the temperature around the plants. But it's still the actual air temperature that matters, not the wind chill value. No matter what, the wind will only cool the plants down to the larger surrounding air temperature, never below. And that would have happened anyway, even without the wind, just slower. And this also applies to the risk of frost, but it's not always negative. For example, while wind can blow away the warmer air that's protecting your plants from frost, it can also stir up the colder air that pools in depressions and valleys. In that case, the wind actually helps to prevent frost. But as usual, it's the actual temperature, not the wind chill value, that matters. And finally, I'd also like to reiterate that there are other variables that can contribute to temperature fluctuations, like the humidity of the air and evaporative cooling. But those are actually different topics which can be influenced by the wind, but aren't specifically relevant to the wind chill factor. However, if you're curious about those effects, please let me know and I can look into them as well. So the bottom line is that plants are absolutely susceptible to the cold. The wind does come with certain dangers, but when watching the weather forecast, it's the actual temperature that matters to your plants, not the wind chill value. I really hope that helps to answer any questions you might have, but if not, please let me know in the comments. And in the meantime, thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon.